Hi, Lindsay with Milk. Today I'm sharing with you what essentially are two separate exercises to prevent or to help with lower back pain. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the exercises, show you the exercises, and then build a little bit on them. So to start, I want to say that I have struggled with lower back pain, particularly lower back pain most of my life. Um, I went to chiropractors and physiotherapists as a young teenager and so on. And of course, I don't want to make a complex issue and simplify too much, but I can say that in my own personal practice, I had, uh, let's say, more success than I had with um, going to specialists because I do very firmly believe that the work that we do at home every day or every other day or on a weekly basis is very, very important. And I will speak about why I think this sort of exercise works contrary to what I used to do before. Previous, I used to have an urge to really stretch my back out, curving my back a lot and stretching it, even uh, pulling up things like hanging off of things to get an even deeper curve in my lower back but throughout my whole back and I would feel a, a release as I was doing so. I wouldn't say I could recognize it was getting worse right after doing so but it certainly was not getting better. It was a momentary instant release of pain let's say but then it would all just go back to normal. If you do have back pain you really should not be doing that. You should not uh, give in to the urge of stretching between your vertebras in your lower back and rather in any stretching position where I could feel my lower back actually stretching I would start engaging my core and actually curving my back to um, contracting in my lower abdomen so it's more about engaging your muscles in doing something and not pushing it too far so we're firstly going to do a very simple cat-cow exercise. I'm sure you've done it a million times, or at least you have seen it. So we will come to tabletop in all fours, and we will do a cat-cow. Now, I will show you what I want you to not do, and then I'll show you what I would like you to, to try out, maybe every morning before you start your day. Okay, so let's come to all fours. Of course, find a good stance. Uh, your hands are under your shoulders, your knees are under your hips, and you're pushing the floor away, so you're strong, standing strong here. Now, what I used to do at any occasion I had to overstretch my back and really push through my back, so I will show you now. I would come to a curve, but I wouldn't stop where the curve kind of naturally stops. I would push all I could through my head and curve through my back and even pull my weight back so that I would curve more in the lower region. Now, I'm not saying this is wrong. I'm just saying that if your back hurts, um, if your lower back hurts, this could potentially make it much worse. So I do want you to try to not do this, at least for a period of time. Rather, think about the, the middle of the top of your head here and then your tailbone, so your table, tailbone is pointing in the opposite direction. So tailbone pointing back, top of the head pointing forward. Now think that these two are going to elongate and then curve over and meet down in the middle. Now they won't actually meet, but their energy will sort of meet, okay? So let's try that version. So long spine. Elongate your spine and then think that you're curving around something and you're not pushing further than what your, um, let's say your natural curve is. So mine is actually just here, okay? So if you feel, if you can feel your, your tummy, you're probably engaging in your abdomen, at least in your inner muscles. And you're still pushing the floor, but you're not giving a very uh, strong push. Now you can relax your neck slightly. Now come to a straight spine, so elongating. Think that your spine is getting longer as you stretch out. 
Okay, again, long spine, stretch out, then curve. So you are curving around something, you're hugging something with your body. And come back to straight spine. Okay, and I suggest you do this at least 10 times. And you can be, <laughs> we're getting really stiff now that <laughs> I'm explaining, but you can be a bit mobile, okay? So stretch your spine and hug around. Engage your core muscles and come to a long, straight spine. And again, breathe out, hug, hug around something. So don't let your neck go completely, hold it and stretch out. Okay, so I would suggest try this every morning so what i did a couple of years ago is i started doing this every morning and what i found was that i uh, my whole body would tingle my arms would kind of feel like they were um, losing their circulation and i would have all of these strange sensations in my body as if i was doing some extreme stretch which i cl clearly was not but that is how stiff my back would, would get at the, um, after a night of sleep. Now I don't get like that anymore, but it took me a couple of years where I did this exercise every morning, first thing I did when I got up, to kind of get back to a loose and, and mobile back, okay? So try that. If this feels good, you can even try circles. Now I'll show you a circle it's very intuitive, so I'm sure you, <laughs> you can get there on your own, but if you already feel like you are struggling or you feel some kind of pain in your back from doing a regular cat-cow, then maybe skip the circle. But you can try the circle, okay, to engage your hips more and your shoulders more. So let's try the circle. I will come to a curve. So curve and hug around something. Elongate your spine and then push out to one side, gently push, coming down gently in the middle and then curve and push up. So I really do suggest that you do these exercises very gently, okay? And then as you get warmer, then you can push more if you want to. But the purpose of this uh, this video right now is to talk about how you can prevent to push too much, okay, and overstretch your back. We don't really want to do that. Okay, circle, and you can, or you should probably do the circles to the other side. And if you can feel your hips kind of cracking or making noise, I suggest that you slow down your movement and breathe deeper and deep down in your belly and your pelvis. Okay, let's come back to tabletop. Now to further build on this exercise, um, what I started incorporating, as I was saying a couple of years ago, was to do planches. Now a regular planche is quite a um, difficult exercise. So what I'm proposing to you right now is a kind of a mini planche and it's not because you cannot do it, because I know you can, but it's more because I want to isolate what we're actually working with. And we are now concentrating on releasing that lower back pain and strengthening the core muscles that protect your lower back. We would come to a regular tabletop again, but instead of doing a cat cow, I want you to uh, make a small contraction in your lower, lower abdomen. As I pull my knees, couple of centimeters off the floor. So on my breath out, I contract and I pull my knees off the floor. Okay, let's try. Tabletop, strong position. Oh, tuck your toes. <laughs> That's going to help you. Breathe in and as you breathe out, lift up and contract your lower abdomen. So really try to curve your lower back and come down and relax. Okay, let's try again. 
Breathe in. Nice to breathe out. Contract and hold. So keep breathing and calm down. One last time. Breathe in and breathe out. Lift up. So strong front of the body. Contracting your lower back and your abdomen. And come down. Okay, <laughs> well done. So I spoke a little bit throughout these exercises and I hope it makes sense to you. I hope this can help you, at least that you can try it out. It has helped me tremendously. Maybe you're already doing this, that's amazing. And I thank you so much for being here. I hope I will see you again soon. Ciao.